start out by thanking Allison at podfeet.com. She has been in the podcast business for 15 years. She has three fantastic podcasts. Her main one is a technology podcast with an ever so slight Apple bias. And she allowed me to create segments for her podcast. It really started me down the path of having my own podcast. And then along the way, she helped me with the right files and technology setup. She helped me with how to upload and create the feed. She also helped with using the software in the best possible method and helping me get the right software. She also helped by letting people on her list and social media know about this podcast. Thanks again for everything that you've done for me, and I appreciate it a great deal. Please listen to her podcast, the Nozilla Cast podcast. You can find it at podfeet.com along with her other podcasts. It does not take much strength to do things, but it requires a great deal of strength to decide what to do. Albert Hubbard. I struggled in my 20s. I saw my entire life in front of me, along with every opportunity and direction. Where should I live? What should I do for a living? Should I get more schooling? Should I get married, have children? There were so many paths and so many directions. I couldn't even think about what's next. I couldn't figure out which direction to go in. I didn't even know how to decide which direction to go in. It was a nightmare. When we don't pick goals or directions, decisions are made for us. At some point, paths are closed off, other doors are open. It's just how life is. And so you have to decide now which kind of goals and dreams do you want to take on and make a reality. One thing I learned over the years is that the impossible really is possible. I know when I was in my 20s, I didn't think anything was possible. You know, that I would be as happy as I am today, that I'd have a job that I really liked like I do now. It just seemed so far. And when I was in my 20s, I had three jobs. I was very poor. The job market was incredibly bad. I couldn't see my way around doing anything I wanted to do in my life. I resigned myself to being poor and alone and not really having much going for me. I really needed to think about how to change my life. So even when you're stuck in a position where you don't have advantages in life, you still have to go through small steps. You might have more small steps that you need to go through because you're starting from a place where there's just disadvantage. But the process is the same. You just have to go through and figure out what's the next thing that I need to do in order to do better and keep going through that process until you see yourself clear of it. As you start achieving these things, you start realizing dreams are possible. So how do you go about deciding which goals and which dreams you want to take on and make it a reality? We can only do so much at the same time. And when we're talking about small changes, we're also thinking about limited changes. And when we are deciding, we have to think about the time, the resources, either financial or material. Do we have the mental oomph to carry it out? There's a lot of considerations when picking what our next goal will be. So a good place to start is to first look at the areas of your life you want to work on. There's a few of them to consider, and even more than what I'm listing here. Do you want to change in terms of your location or your home, your health, faith, purpose, fitness, financials, work, happiness, grit, community, friendship, hobbies, charity, learning something new, relationships? There are so many areas that we can tackle, but truthfully, we have to pick just a few that really we have to focus on. The problem is, is that they aren't all equal and some of them demand our attention. We can't give up on our family because this isn't the year we're going to look at our family, nor can we give up at work just because we're not planning on focusing on that this year. They all still come at us and we still have to make them a part of our lives. Truthfully, even if we do pick a few areas to work on, we can't guarantee that we can follow through on that. Maybe when we thought we weren't going to really focus on work and that our job was stable, we need to immediately change plans. Or when your family was quite happy and things were cooking along, someone in your family needs immediate attention. Sometimes we have to change our plans and, and go after something because it became more important. We are really bad at knowing what's best for our lives and our happiness. Sometimes we make bad decisions when it comes to that. We've dated bad people. We've picked bad jobs. 
And despite the fact that we are bad at evaluating our lives, in the end, we're still the biggest expert there is about what is good for us. So we have to take action based on what we can learn about ourselves. If we step outside our own lives and treat ourselves almost like our own friend, it might help us see the big picture. If we pretend that we were watching our lives as if it were a movie, what would you be screaming at the screen? Just go do blank already. I spent a summer abroad in college and came back with an entirely new perspective. It really changed my life. So travel can help too. So asking yourself some really great questions that really focus in. Here are a few example hard questions to ask yourself. Dig deep. Really think about these. So if I were to ask you to pick one thing you could do that would make your life amazing, astounding, happy, what would that be? When you pray at night, what do you pray for? What do you really want your life to look like in five or 10 years? What areas of your life would you benefit the most with some attention? What are some areas of your life scare you the most when you think about your future? If you were to ask those closest to you to tell you the things that you need to improve, what would they say? What do you just love doing and you would do it for free? What did you dream of as a child? If you acted as your own best friend, what advice would you give yourself? What is the most important problem that you need to solve right now? If you gave a thank you speech in 20 years, what would you be most thankful for? If you got a prize at your retirement, what would be the achievement? If you could have all the money and time in the world, what would you do? What would make you happier if you could achieve it? What could stop your happiness if this thing happened? What makes you cry? What makes you angry? These are all really great questions to ask yourself and maybe give you some sort of insight as to where you can really go about setting a goal, looking at a particular area. My best friend and I have a lot of things that are exactly opposite from each other, and this area is one of them. She thrives when she aspires to a goal and has a vision of the future. I thrive better, strangely, out of fear. I often say to myself, do you really want to go to retirement without any money and so overweight that you can't have any adventures? Well, you better go do something about it. It might be the voice that we get from people in our lives when we were younger, but either way, you have to find out which questions mean the most to you. When you consider the future goals, you also must consider circumstances. What kind of goals do you have time to tackle right now? Do you have the money for something like this? Maybe the circumstance requires a particular focus or a particular location. Maybe something has your attention and your energy right now, and so there would be some backing behind it. There's nothing like having focus and joy to help a goal become true. I wanted to do a podcast for a while, as I mentioned before, but because of the current circumstances, I now have the time to do it. I also had my money that I was going to spend on vacation to spend on the podcast. And I really had the interest. I had an invitation to do segments for a podcast. So I knew a little bit about how to record a session and how to make it sound okay. But doing those segments really started me on the goal of doing a podcast for myself. I loved doing them. I thought they were fun. And now here I am on my own podcast. Now, once you pick a focus, you must figure out how many goals to choose. We'll look at a few ideas in picking goals now that you have a general topic that you want to fix in your life. Something to keep in mind is we all just have 24 hours in a day, 365 days in a year. We all have obligations and hobbies. Once you start working towards a goal, you might change your mind and decide that you don't want to pursue it. And sometimes you don't really know until you start taking those first steps. And if you're starting out in goal setting, start small, build trust in yourself. As you get more experience and start achieving more goals, you can take slightly bigger steps, but in general, keep it small. It's hard when you're new and you really don't know if you will succeed at the things that you set aside for yourself. Once you learn a little bit more, then you'll be able to temper this a better way. The Full Focus Planner is part of Michael Hyatt's planning tools. It's really geared towards high performance checklist and goals with plenty of reflecting on what went right, what went wrong in that time period. They split out goals into two kinds, achievement goals and habit goals. Achievement goals are something that has a set goal, like to pay off a house or go on a big vacation. 
Habit goals are more something that you will do every day, like have two servings of vegetables or take a walk after work. Then they have people pick seven to 10 annual goals in a variety of areas, just like we mentioned before. They think any more goals might get overwhelming. They mentioned that according to one study by Dr. Gail Matthews at the Dominican University, there is a 40% bigger likelihood of achieving a goal if you write it down. Their planner is built around gathering and measuring these goals with records of reasons and the love of plans and checkboxes. Some people love their paper format and other people love digital. Some people like me can't deal with planners, but that's up to you. It's a good place to start if you really love having a paper diary where you can document your goals and plans. Then there's the one thing, and it's Planner and a System, which starts from a book and a podcast by Gary Keller. His one thing is to get readers and listeners to pick one thing. Really focus on that by planning it out, blocking off time, and doing it. He gives us the data that it takes 66 days on average to form a plan or a habit and stick to it. Stickiness is what we want because we don't want to either fall back into our old ways or fall away from our goals. What Gary suggests is, what is the one thing I can do right now such that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary? He suggests saying that to yourself every day. He has a plan on his website called the 411 plan. The first step is to set a long-term goal and also maybe look five years into the future. Then sets yearly goals based on this one goal from the future. Then he breaks those goals into monthly goals, then derives the weekly goals from there. Then from here, you block off time on your planner or your schedule or wherever you keep it and start writing specific actionable tasks. In that sense, it's very much like the focus planner. On a podcast I heard him talk about, he wants you to seek those items for big impacts for your year, your month, or your week. It comes down to saying, if I were to achieve this action, my life would be so much better. He recently developed a 66-day plan. The goal is to pick one thing and work on it for 66 days until you nailed it. Maybe you repeat it. He mentions he had to repeat the 66-day plan four times in order to get something very solid in his life that was difficult for him. He takes these small steps and he really does the heck out of them until they're set. For me, who's not that much into planners, at least in my personal life, this seems much more appealing to me. He warns not to make this into a to-do list. The activities must fit the ultimate goal and not just something you want to check off a list. To find out more about this plan, there will be a link to it in my show notes. In his book, he frames the plan as a someday goal, a one-year goal, a monthly goal, a weekly goal, and the right now goal. They all work together and are subgroups of the someday goal. This sets up what he considers to be dominoes that fall right into success. As the small tasks and goals are accomplished, the bigger dominoes start to fall. And he insists that you block time for this one thing. Once it's done for the day, then the rest of life can continue to happen and then the other goals and tasks you have can come. He says you should live with purpose and visualize your goal, that you should never compromise on that one thing even in the face of work. He says we must pursue these dominoes ruthlessly. I have not used this plan for my personal life, but I have used it for customer projects at work. I go into work every month and ask myself, what is the one thing I need to do to make my customer successful? Then I do the same thing for the week. What must I do this week in order to make this week rock? Every day I ask myself, what is the one thing I must do today to make it a great day and to help my customers succeed? It isn't the intent of the planning system, but it really helps me focus. He has a nice goal planning guide, which you'll be able to find in my show notes. It's really long, but it fully lays out his plan. 
So if you see the idea of picking a goal or a few goals, but not too many, that you make the task fall in line with your main goal. And as the small steps come together, they're all pointing towards a successful end. Each of us have to decide what our bandwidth is and fully dedicating to our goals without excuse. But I just wanted to ask you which way I ought to go. Well, that depends on where you want to get to. Oh, it really doesn't matter. As long as I... Then it really doesn't matter which way you go. So here's an interesting take on Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland looks to be a tale of a girl growing up. She daydreams all day, can't pay attention. She even falls into the hole. She doesn't go into the hole. And then she lands into a place where there's no aim or direction. She admits to believing anything. She's curious about everything and has no direction or goal. She's confused about the weird world around her and investigates everything she sees. She meets an elderly caterpillar who has some good advice, but he is so comfortable where he's at, he's not going anywhere. He is stuck. He is perfectly happy smoking and relaxing. A Cheshire cat who's confusing, and the only aim he has is just to be confusing. He's comforting, but his advice is useless. When the cat asks her who she is, she says, I hardly know. The white rabbit is busy all the time, perpetually late. He is frustrating and frustrated. The Mad Hatter's insane. He is stuck in a party that never ends. And the Queen of Hearts bossing everyone around. She's making her priorities everyone else's problems. She doesn't care about the impact that it has on other people's lives or what they have to do. So in the end, Alice grows up and she grows up in size and in determination and returns home. You can look at the story as Alice progressing from a child into an adult. According to the editors, Charles Fry and John Griffin, Alice is engaged in a romantic quest for her own identity and growth, for some understanding of logic, rules, the games people play, authority, time, and death. When you approach the book with this idea in mind, it offers an interesting and meaningful interpretation of the events and characters in the story. So this is what we must do. We must throw away the confusion and the uselessness. We must stop becoming daydreamers. We must get rid of being stuck in contentment. Throw off the priorities that are driving us mad or burning us out and all of the priorities that everyone else is putting on us. And lastly, throw off the bossy other people who make their life more important than your own. Summary. Dream big about your life. Look at those main areas you have in your life and figure out where you really need some work or where you have some really big goals. Number two, ask some hard questions of yourself so that you know what it is you're really looking for in life. Put your frame in terms of a TV show that you're watching or asking your friend what you would work on or treating yourself like your own best friend. What advice would you give yourself? but ask those tough questions and get good answers. Three, look at some of the big goals you have in life or in the next five years. Start to create a list of the things that you would really love to tackle. But keep in mind, we only have 24 hours in a day and 365 days in a year. Four, determine how many goals that you would like to have. The focus planter suggests seven to 10, but Gary Keller says dedicate for the one thing. Come up with a number that you really reasonably think that you can tackle and that you can dedicate to with blocks of time every day. Challenge number one, look at the areas in your life you would like to see progress or attain goals. Number two, look at a few big goals that you would like to achieve in your life or the next five years. Three, pick a good number of goals that you think are attainable with the time, energy, and resources you have right now. Four, every day ask yourself, what is the one thing I can do right now such that by doing it, everything else will be made easier? So here's our fun advice of the day. Ferris Bueller says, I said it before and I'll say it again. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. 
So what do you think of this advice? I think it sums up a lot about this podcast. Life does come at us pretty fast, and it even gets faster as you go. So stop and look around, then prioritize. I'm not sure that that's what Ferris meant by it, but let's go with it. Let me know what you thought of this episode. Check out our Slack channel and the website at smallstepspod.com. Please subscribe, leave a review, and tell a friend. S-F-R. Subscribe, review, friend. All right. Thank you very much and have a great week.